Okay. Well, hey, it's noon, and we're just getting started with the message, right? <coughs> Lord Jesus, we thank you. So, hey, this week we're going to have something awesome happen. Recently, we released uh, and sent Ed to, to Brazil, and uh, he... For those of you that know Ed, he's awesome. I love him, but he's always been a little bit, he's always been a little reserved and very like this. And when he got back from, when he got back from Brazil, he's like, Jason, we need to have breakfast. And so we went to the Chestnut Cottage and I think it was like three and a half, four hours later, you know, I was, he was having a hard time staying in his chair and we were just laying there twitching and laughing and and I was just listening to all the stories and whatnot. And, and the reality is, is that um, there, there's just some stuff that he needs to release and impart. And so we're going to receive from Ed today. So if you guys can just bless him, honor him on his way up, it'll be really good. I turned it on. There we go. <laughs> That's so cool. I don't think there's any other church in the whole country like this church. I really don't. <laughs> there isn't. <clears throat> so where the spirit of the Lord is, there is. That's right. And where there's more of his spirit, there's more freedom. Yeah. Yeah. In, in, <laughs> really? <laughs> really, where this uh, Brazil trip comes from is a place of freedom. And hopefully all of this dovetails into what we've been doing today, because it needs to. <laughs> so it's, it's about freedom. My whole... Christian life. I mean, I, when I got saved 33 plus years ago, I'm not a dinosaur, but when I got saved 33 plus years ago, it was, it's a long story and it's another talk, but it was such a radical conversion that um, it just left me with, with just wanting nothing more than to impact other people, you know, and to see healing come especially and deliverance. And people getting saved in their lives not staying the same because mine wasn't. It's pretty cool. Anyway, another story, but it, you, you'll, you'll be interested if I tell that story up here. Yeah. It will do something, speaking of freedom. Okay. So um, about three and a half years ago, Loretha and I really wanted, or I really wanted to go, but she supported me. <laughs> Did you really want to go too? <laughs> To the Healing Impartation Conference uh, at Bethel in Reading, where Randy Clark and Bill Johnson were speaking. And so we're listening to this amazing conference. And uh, Bill says, you know what, if you want to slay giants or kill giants, you have to hang out with giant killers. Yeah. And I never forgot that. And so I go, wow. So for what I want to do, I have to go hang out with giant killers. And he says, go on a trip with Randy if you want to learn how to kill giants. And so this December, I got to do that. It was the coolest thing, the coolest thing. Um, I wanted to share a story, but about, you know, getting there. It was interesting, flying six hours uh, from SeaTac to New York. That's just how they had me flying down there to Brazil. I get to the airport in New York, can't remember which one it's called now, it's probably LaGuardia or something like that, and I, I never travel with a suitcase that I have to check in, I always carry a carry-on, and, uh, but this lady, this airline lady convinces me to check in my carry-on, she goes, there's no room on the flight for your bag, no room, oh great, and so I said, are you sure it's going to get there? I said, scout's honor, scout's honor, yes, it will get there. It did not get there. <laughs> it actually got to the, the first major destination, which was Sao Paulo or Sao Paulo, Brazil. And uh, I didn't realize that I was supposed to pick it up off the carousel 
even though she tagged it for Londrina, where I went, it never got off the carousel. It was just round and round, I found out later on. <laughs> so, so anyways, I'm, I'm getting there, and I, I'm looking for the suitcase. It's not there. I finally get to the, where everybody else is at. And, uh, and I, I'm going, this is, this is crazy. I, I've, I'm, I'm really, I'm stuck now. Now I have to buy clothes. I was really embarrassed. And I was, you know, because I held the, there was a big bus with, a, with other team members on it, about 50 to 60 people or so. And I'm, and I'm, uh, I'm thinking, great, I just, I've just held up 50 or 60 people. And then, uh, you know, before we get to the bus, Pat, one of the leaders, says, it's okay, we'll get your bag back. It might take two or three days, but you'll have it before the end of the trip. And then, <laughs> then he reminds me, he reminds me, uh, he goes, well, you know, there was a little reminder that you were supposed to pick up your bag in Sao Paulo before the next, the final destination. And I go, great, I overlooked that, you know. But anyways, I'm getting on the bus and I'm really embarrassed, really embarrassed. And they held all these people up. They've all traveled from all over the world to be there, seven different countries, right? You know, great. And, but you know, nobody, not one person said anything negative whatsoever. Not one word. And I was looking for it, you know, <laughs> You know, something's going to happen. Nobody did that. And it's interesting, I was reading one of Randy's books later on when I got back, and they, they have made a principle out of not humiliating anyone. Like no embarrassment, no humiliation, none of that. Because they really knew that if anything caused the enemy to have a foothold on this trip, it would create problems. And it would throw the, the focus and the vision off course. I thought that was really interesting. I thought, what a high principle, a high standard to have. So the next day I got my bag back. Yeah. Yeah, um, Ed Roca, the guy that was going to be coming, that didn't, but maybe another time. One of his pastors, Zach, this big Brazilian guy, just went to town and he goes, I'll get your bag back. And he gets it the next day. And, uh, yeah, it was huge. It really took a relief. Uh, it gave me relief. Yeah. So there was 116 people on this trip from, like I said, seven different countries. There was Australia, New Zealand, Poland, Canada, USA, Chile, and England. There were pastors, there were teachers, there were professional people. One guy was a dentist. Uh, There was a surgeon from New York on this trip, a physicist from England, you know, a bunch of business people and just everyday people. Husbands and wives. God willing, in, in December, my wife and I are going to go together to Brazil. It's interesting. I thought that you know, it would just be Randy Clark leading this trip. That's how it was advertised. But it, it wasn't just him. There was a guy named Blaine Cook, who I met about 15 years ago at a conference. And uh, he is one of the earliest um, uh, pastoral, you know, prophetic, you know, healing people in the vineyard movement that John Wimber said, I want you. He's on this trip. And he's just just amazing. And he's like a kid, you know, at times. And it was just fun. And, uh, and then a, and a pastor named Randy Hogue, who was previously a Baptist pastor that actually pastored in Bremerton, Washington in the 80s. He was on this trip. But they both go around the world with, with Randy. This was... Uh, Anyways, so uh, we had to share rooms. I'm sharing a room with, a, with an uh, Anglican vicar. Yeah, neat guy named Tony. And basically a pastor of a church over there filled with the Holy Spirit. He'd been on his third trip um, uh, to, uh, you know, going with global folks. The overall event was called Mice Fogu, Mice Gloria, Intense. So it's more fire and more glory. We're in a city that's of 600,000 people, and the event was announced as a citywide conference. Uh, we had meetings at various churches, like, they, believe it or not, in Brazil, there were Baptist churches, Presbyterian, community, and evangelical churches. So if you could show a couple pictures up there, that'd be awesome. Jackie, hopefully we'll give you just, there's a few pictures that kind of help you get a little bit of an idea of what things look like and stuff. So that's the team. It, so they broke all of us up into smaller teams. So you kind of had like a little, your own little cell group that you could 
meet together and share stuff and pray for one another. And uh, the couple on the left is a couple from Florida. They're just amazing people. It was their second trip, I think it was. And anyways, that's who I was with for the, for the whole week. There's a physical therapist in there and a school teacher and, and resort owners from Australia in the middle, the guy in the red shirt. Really neat people. Go ahead and show the next picture there and see what we got. This is a, you can't see really well, but this is the Baptist church. And there was 900 people in this meeting one night. The worship team, I've never seen worship, maybe except this church, but I've never seen worship as intense as I've seen them worship down there. And the guy leading this, I don't know his last name, his first name is Davi or something like that, was a former famous rock star in Brazil. They're leading worship. His son's this guy with hair down to here, and he's just rocking out in the drums. They were, they were playing so hard, one of the speakers started smoking <laughs> on, the, on, on the rack up there. Yeah, It's cool. Go to the next picture. Let's see what we get. This is the Presbyterian Church. And there was, this is was a morning meeting. There's about 400 people there. We're there about at least four mornings, four or five mornings. And these are people, that, you know, up here, how, how much would the Holy Spirit be expected to break out in a Presbyterian church in this day and age, or a Baptist church for that matter? Well, it does down there. And they're, they're, they're totally open. They're not ashamed. Let's go to another one. Well, we'll show that picture later. Tell you more about that later. During the seven days of actual ministry down there, there was over 2,000 physical healings. 2,000. 1,100 emotional and inner healings. 200 salvations. And 1,100 people just laid out in the Holy Spirit, (laughs) just wrecked. I was praying for one young guy, a college student named Felipe. And I touch him once, and he's like, like this for who knows how long. And then I see him a couple of days later in another church, and I touch him, he goes... (laughs) <laughs> but he had such an intense hunger in him that he says, he says, how do I take this back to my school, you know? And it's just the neatest thing to encourage him. Yeah. Um, 43 deaf ears were opened. 33 blind eyes received their sight back. 18 tumors disappeared. Okay. 14 had metal in their body disappear, getting full mobility back. Ten of them, uh, ten of the people who were lame began walking normally again. One lady had, couldn't, hadn't walked, I can't, I think it was like five or six years at one meeting. And somebody had just started praying with her. Her her right leg was out and they had to carry her in, I think it was. She had a wheelchair, I can't remember. And the guy, one of the team members had a word of knowledge and it was about forgiveness for her. So she goes through this thing about forgiveness. I think it was an ex-husband, abusive guy, whatever. She gets it back. She gets full mobility back. She's running up and down the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. Just amazing. See if you can fast forward. There was a, there's a couple of pictures in there, Jackie. There's a blue truck. There, this is one of the buses that we were on. They use these tour buses. Keep going. This, this was a truck, and that's actually a worship band. And prior to one of the events, um, they, we went through the city of Londrina for about two miles. The next picture. And there's probably about 200 people. And in them, amongst them is a bunch of pastors. And so we're walking for two miles about every block and a half. I've never seen this happen before. People stopped and they got on their knees and they prayed for the city. And we're surrounded by all these tall apartment buildings. There's people watching and raising their hands and stuff like that. And the goal was to make the, an event known that night that was happening in a sports arena. And uh, they, uh, anyways, it was just the coolest thing. But it, every block and a half or so on their knees praying and it's just the coolest thing. Yeah. So can you go back to that picture, Jackie? There's a, there was one with a girl, black hair. Let's see if you can find that one. There you go. This girl's 14 years old, the one on the left, if you can see her. She was born prematurely. This is, this is uh, Randy's actual highlight. Among every healing that happened, this was his highlight. 
She was born at five months of age, uh, premature and stone deaf. Her ears had never developed. Whatever goes inside, the hammer, the drum, all that stuff. So at one service, she gets prayed for, and the next morning, she hears dogs barking. Yeah. It's the first sound she heard in her whole life. She hears dogs barking. So she's got part of her hearing back, and then the next day she comes to another service, and they pray for her again, and she gets it all back. All of it. Yeah. Yeah. And then she prays for another girl who's deaf, expecting God to show up and heal her. I don't know what the outcome was, but that was the coolest thing. She took it and gave it right away. Yeah. I prayed for a guy uh, named Junior. This is a good story. He's about 52 years old. He looks pretty rough for wear, kind of a working class guy. He's with his wife, Louisa. And uh, he was, had a kidney infection that had been there for five years. And he, for, for whatever reasons, that infection caused 100% deafness uh, in his, in his uh, right ear, I think it was, in his left ear, also causing vertigo. He had 50% deafness in the right ear. And then he goes, my, my leg's been hurting for the longest time. So we start praying, and uh, I put my hand on his kidney, and he goes, it's burning. And I said, are you sure that's just not my hot, sweaty hand on your side? He goes, no, it's burning on the inside. It's burning on the inside. So we go after the ear that's fully deaf, and, and uh, it didn't uh, let up, but his vertigo left, and the 50% ear came back 100%. And it never touched his leg. But he goes, my leg, there's no more pain. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. yeah. His wife had ulcerative colitis. She had some bowel bleeding issues. Prayed for her. And all I can tell is she had to be healed. She said, I felt this heat, this intense heat on the top of my head going down to my toes. Yeah. So, you know, the coolest thing about seeing stuff like this happen is it's not so much to say, look what I did. <laughs> <laughs> but like, look what, look what God did. He showed up because he loves these people like crazy. They're incredibly hungry people down there. They're so open to the gospel. It's primarily a Catholic country, right? And they think that that's really why God's so, showing up so much. There are more healings happening in the country of Brazil than anywhere else in the world. And they really believe it's the hunger. They believe it's also the fact that they're already open uh, as far as the Catholic religion. And that's, that's made it made an open ground for them. I want to show you a video. Um, now, I want to go to the video that's listed. This is a live testimony or a testimony of a lady that had 23 metal screws in her back. And she was in constant pain for a five years, I guess, also. In fact, she was in a meeting. She couldn't stay seated because she was in so much pain. She goes outside and her 13-year-old granddaughter comes out and says, Grandma, you have to come back inside. They need to pray for you. So if we can show that video. 21 screws. 20, 23 screws. Five years in constant pain, taking morphine. And she was outside the building because she couldn't stand being sitting there with pain. They have a big pillow over there. She was trying to just sit on the pillow. She wanted to go home. Her king foi que chamou Pra vir. Foi vem cá que ele tá orando. Quem foi que chamou? A minha netinha. Her granddaughter. Não, her granddaughter said, Grandma, come inside. He's praying for people with metal. Yeah. Telling them to try to do what they can't. <laughs> so I came inside and Isabella called me. And I tried to do and I tried to move. Vira pela Isabela. And then the pain is totally gone. Você foi lá chamar ela? Foi. Por que você foi chamar ela? Porque... Ah, pra ela poder vir escutar. Você teve fé que ela ia ficar curada? Teve. Que bom que você teve essa fé que chamou ela, né? Uhum. Tá feliz que ela te chamou? Tô muito. Glória, are you happy that she went to call you? Yeah, of course, yes. All the pain is gone. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Zero. 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 Pain was 10, now the pain is zero. Before the pain was 10, now the pain, was, the pain is zero, and she has 23 screws on her back. And she was for five years in chronic pain, taking morphine, and now the pain is zero. Thank you, Jesus. Glória a Deus. Um, dois, três. Um, dois, três. Deus abençoe, Padique. All right. 
That was Ed Roca, by the way, uh, interviewing her. Yeah, then Randy standing next to him. Those kinds of healings have, they've figured out there's over 3,000 healings to do with metal disappearing. They also think that it maybe might be uh, being absorbed into the bone, absorbed into the bone structure, but disappearing. Yeah, yeah. Randy even wrote a doctoral dissertation, dissertation called The Study of the Effects of Christian Prayer on Pain or Mobility Restrictions from Surgeries Involving Implanted Materials. <laughs> when you do a scientific thing, it's got to all be really long and wordy and all that, so it sounds really good. But yeah, all about pain and mobility being, yeah, yeah, yeah. One more testimony is there was an interesting thing that um, this young woman asks uh, for, you know, one of the American team members to pray for her so that she can speak in English. And the primary language there is Portuguese, right? Well, she asked to speak in English, speaking in English. The Brazilian Portuguese speaking woman. And then she hears the, the team member respond in Portuguese. And that's not the first time they've seen it happen. Yeah. yeah, it's the coolest thing. Matthew eleven twelve. from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and violent men take it by force. I didn't really understand that scripture as well. I don't know why, I just have a hard time comprehending it until I heard Randy Hoag uh, speaking one night at one of the churches. And he modified it so I can understand it. I don't think he realized that. He said, forceful but hungry people take the kingdom, right? It's forceful and hungry people go after the kingdom. Yeah. It's interesting about that there was a team from Poland. There was 20-some people from Poland. Many of them were pastors, and there were some were business people. There was a, a couple of, you know, uh, couples, you know, married couples on the trip. Can you show that picture? It's more towards the end. There's a couple of pictures of these Polish people. And they were just a riot down there, these guys. In fact, Randy is going to Poland. I don't know if I mentioned it. I think we mentioned it earlier, to, just for these guys. This guy's actually a pastor. You can't really see really well. He's got hair down to here. And he looks like some cartoon character almost to me anyways. But he's just the funniest guy but he's a pastor. There's another picture coming up. We're in this really fancy restaurant, right? It's the nicest uh, venue that whole week of going out to eat. And they paid, you know, it's part of your deal. And this is, uh, I'm sitting right next to the guy that you see in the bottom right with the glasses and whatnot. Anyways, Blaine finishes eating his meal and uh, he decides to start walking around touching people that are sitting at their table trying to eat their lunch or finishing it. And one lady, yeah, one lady starts, she starts going down and pretty soon all I can see is the top of her, you know, like her hands or whatever kind of thing. And she's just overcome with joy. Then he starts working his way around to our table and these guys just lose it. And I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there watching and I go, this is really fun. You know, I'm just, I'm just enjoying watching other people and pretty soon it hits me, you know, <laughs> after the, after the couple across from me starts going underneath the table also, you know. And uh, one, one gal, this uh, Vietnamese American named May, they had to carry her out. She, she, couldn't, she couldn't walk. So this is in this really fancy place, and there's people from, you know, locally there watching and all that sort of deal. So it's interesting. We get back to the hotel after this lunch, and the Polish uh, team decides to have a fire tunnel uh, in, in the, uh, a lobby, off the hotel lobby, and, man, it's just crazy. People are just going down. I just tried to go through it. I'm going down and could barely even just crawl my way out of it kind of a thing. And a little bit later, I, I was, ended up uh, talking with Blaine Cook. And he says, so what do, you, what do you think about that? I said, that was a great party, you know. And he goes, well, some people really have a problem with stuff like that. And he goes, you know what? If you had been underneath 100 years of oppression, you'd be laughing too. Yeah. So he's going to Poland to lift more oppression. Speaking of freedom, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're back at that Presbyterian church. Uh, we're at that Presbyterian church, 
And, uh, you know, each time they would speak, like Randy, for example, would decide, well, are we going to speak about impartation? Are we going to teach on impartation? Or are we going to teach on healing? So this um, morning, um, we're te- he's teaching on impartation. And so I'm really fixed on what he's saying. And, uh, like, the message just really got my attention. Because there's a team of us off to the side, uh, just on this, this big church, and there's the rest of the congregation. And so I... I, I and people are starting to be affected by the Holy Spirit and they're starting to manifest as far as the Holy Spirit coming on them and start going down, they're crying, they're shaking. So I move closer and it's still happening. So I move closer again. And eventually I'm right in front of Randy listening to his message. And one of the most profound things was said that I had tried to wrap my head around also for years and years. But he goes, "I, I, I how did he say this? He goes, I'm not the baptizer, said Jesus is. He says, I don't know what God is doing with someone when the Holy Spirit comes on them. Yeah, I'm just the mailman, he said. I just deliver the mail. And for whatever reasons, that just lowered or or leveled the playing field for me. I just deliver the mail, you know. Because, you know, for years I would have this thing of, well, could I just get close to so and so, you know, maybe I could do what they're doing. You know, maybe, maybe this will work out for me. And totally missing it, really, you know, because all Randy really did, or Bill Johnson, or anybody else you can think of, John Wimber, is they said, "I just want to do what you're doing." Basically, I want to do what you're doing. I want to see what you see. I want to hear what you hear. Kind of a deal. So Randy gives this. Um, call to the Brazilian pastors. The morning meetings were all about leaders and pastors to come up and be prayed for. So they come up on the platform. And so I I thought, well, I'll just go up on the platform too and I'll just start praying for them. And this lady from California, hopefully you'll meet at some point, Joe Moody, uh, she she operates a ministry called Agape Freedom Fighters. I'm I'm getting ready to pray for somebody. She touches me and then I go down. It's like I'm on the floor. I'm on the floor for about 40 minutes at least, and I'm shaking, and then pretty soon I'm just crying, but then I start wailing, just wailing to the core of my gut. It was amazing. I, I thought, what, what's going on? And I thought, well, maybe I've done something wrong, you know? So I said, well, God, please forgive me. And he goes, forgive me, for, forgive you for what? Forgive you for loving me. Forgive you for pursuing me. For wanting more. Is that what you need forgiveness for? And he goes, I'm sending you to the nations. Like, then put your seatbelt on. <laughs> put your seatbelt on. I'm sending you to the nations. So I'm there, there for 40 minutes and when this big guy comes up. He was in the picture earlier on the far right of Randy. He's a pastor from Illinois. He goes, hey, buddy, how you doing? And he grabbed my arm. And he's really big. And he lifts me up. And you doing okay? And, and I was just totally wiped out. I was just in a daze. I could barely, barely walk. It's like walking through quicksand, you know. And, uh, and, and, and then and, and one of the team leaders is saying, come on, come on, we got to go, hurry up, we gotta get, we got to get out of here. We're, you know, the meeting's over. I'm one of the last people there laying on the floor. And uh, they're waiting for this group picture because it's towards the end of the week, you know. So, but I, I have to go to the bathroom, you know. So I try to make it to the bathroom, just wash my face and do things and come back out through quicksand to get to the, the picture. Yeah. Yeah. Randy emphasized something, and, and it, it was over and over again, is that what draws the anointing is faith and hunger. And faith is actually a gift, right? Yeah. I mean, all you need is a mustard seed thing, but it's actually a gift, and you can have more than the mustard seed. But faith and hunger draws the anointing. Randy also emphasized a lot that God can use little old me. If you ever read him uh, very specifically in any of his books, he's somebody that would, was not very sure of himself and never imagined that he would be doing what he's doing today. You know, part of the reason why he's doing what he's doing today is he saw what John Wimber was doing. He goes, I want to do that. 
<clears throat> he starts hanging out with John Wimber. And, and from what they say is John Wimber, the only time he's heard somebody speak or heard the Lord speak audibly about someone else was to do with Randy Clark, about going to the nations and taking us around the world. Yeah. So I've been pursuing God for a long time about this. And especially about just this whole area of healing. And it's interesting about um, in the last nine years, I figured the Holy Spirit has made a specific emphasis on living with expectation. Living with expectation for my wife and I. Because expectation is about faith. And faith is about contending now, right now, for the things that we hope for and the conviction of the things that we can't see. Just like it says in Hebrews 11.1. 1. In the book of Isaiah, in chapter 64, the prophet Isaiah points out <clears throat> that the people of Israel who had been all over the map in terms of their commitment to God, right? They were not a very faithful people. In verse 3, it says, When you, God, did awesome things which we did not expect, you came down and the mountains quaked, at your presence. One of our key verses, my wife and I, is Micah 7, 7. One of, um, but as for me, I will watch expectantly for the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Back in Isaiah 64, verse 4, For from of old they have not heard nor perceived by ear, neither has the eye seen a God besides you, who acts in behalf of the one who waits for him. Verse 5, you meet him who rejoices in doing righteousness, who remembers you in your ways. And in verse 8, but now, O Lord, you are our father, we are the clay. You've heard that before, right? And you are the potter. And all of us are the work of your hand. I love what Ephesians 2.10 says in the Amplified Bible, for we are his workmanship, his own master work, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. He made it ready for you. He made it ready before you were even an idea between your mom and your dad. He made it ready for you. In the Greek, the word for workmanship, this is a good one, is poema. You knew that. <laughs> In essence, we are God's poem. Can you imagine how many of you believe that? You're God's poem. He wrote about you. He writes on you, actually, it says, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're God's poem. Yeah. We're made for carrying out specific God-breathed assignments and missions. You know, here, by the way, obviously, but not just here. Don't underestimate um, that smaller churches can't accomplish international things, right? Yeah, don't underestimate that. It all starts this small, right? It really does, and then it grows. We're not meant to just make a difference in Port Angeles or Squim, right? Yeah. On the last day of uh, us getting together, we're coming to a close here, um, they wanted to do a reverse fire tunnel. Randy Clark where actually they had us line up, and then these three guys walked down the middle. <laughs> so I'm watching people all over the place going down. They're, when they're just it's just crazy, you know? And in fact, obviously anybody that doesn't know what that's all about would think they're crazy. So, Or us, for that matter. Right here, it's not much different. So they're walking down the middle. I'm waiting until the very end. And I, um, Randy Hogue is following Randy Clark, 
And I just grabbed Randy Hogue's hand, the pastor that was, used to be from Bremerton, and I just feel intense presence, you know. And then I start going down laughing. I'm laughing. But then within a minute, I'm just weeping again. And I'm on my face for a half an hour at least. But I was struck with this, this strong thing of saying, I don't want to go without her. Yeah, I don't want to go to the nations without my wife. Yeah. And it was just, it's like, I don't know what that's all about other than I don't want to go without her. And she shares what I share. Yeah. She's doing what I'm doing. Yeah. I have to get up, though, because the bus is going to leave in about 20 more minutes. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to miss my bus to the airport. That wouldn't be good. Yeah. So floor time also happened on the bus. That bus you saw, it was like going through a fire tunnel every time you got on the bus. And you're going <laughs> like this. And uh, then one time I'm laying on the floor because it just felt so good, you know. And some guy got concerned about safety stuff. And I, well, whatever, you know. It was a fire tunnel. So floor time there, about during the middle of the week, Joe Moody, the gal that touched me in the Presbyterian church, she tells me um, before an evening's meeting, she goes, I want to give you all that I have. And she's got this huge ministry, basically, with deliverance and healing, because I want you to have what I have. She said, I'm going to pray for you this week. I'll, I said, good, you, I'll find you. So, <laughs> so... So I find her. Yeah, I find her. And uh, gosh, oh yeah, it was the hotel lobby. That's where it was at. I, I, I said, you want to pray now? She goes, sure. So she prays for me in the hotel lobby. She grabs my hands and I go down again. I'm on the floor on my back. I'm there for about 20 minutes. This is like a four or five star hotel looking kind of place. Pretty fancy down there, you know. People are coming in and out and there's all the clerks and everybody watching. So when I finally get up, there's two little Brazilian kids sitting on a couch with their mom. I go, hola. You know, they're, they're, they're smiling. I go, I'm thinking, they're thinking, mommy, there's this drunk man on the floor. <laughs> What's he doing down there? Even on the plane, on the plane. I mean, the airport, I'm getting the airport. I'm just wherever I'm touching. You know, it's just, it was just a huge weight of his presence down there. It's like this mega dose, and it's just intense joy, intense peace. And on the plane, I'm, I'm sitting behind a lady from Spokane that you'd really enjoy. They actually have a church connected with our uh, IFM, you know, uh, denominational thing. So, but she touches my, my hand, and she's like, more Lord, and I start going down again on the plane. And then I'm really... I'm, Overcome, and then this couple walks up, this Brazilian couple, and they're about 25 or so, waiting to sit down. They go, they go okay, I'll get up. Yeah. So, um, get to the airport in Sao Paulo. Interesting thing is uh, the flight ends up getting canceled because somebody had made a bomb threat towards one of their planes from some other country. So, you know, spending a night, you know, I'm looking forward to just getting home now. And, of course, that doesn't happen. Next day, I get to the, uh, get to the airport because they put me up, and I run into Randy Hogue thinking that he didn't realize he's been canceled also, the guy that I, you know, had imparted more whatever. And uh, so he, I, I'm walking to the restroom before the flight happens. I'm, I'm thinking, so what are the chances that he and I are going to sit next to each other? So I come back from the bathroom. He goes, what seat you got? I tell him, he goes, well, I got one right next to you. So... <laughs> so, so Pretty much. So, so we get on the flight. He's a little bit ahead of me. And he actually tries to snag a business class seat. And so I go, okay, I guess we're not going to sit next to each other. So I go sit down and I'm, um, you know, making conversation with a cardiologist from Londrina, a Brazilian guy. And a few minutes later, Randy comes up. He goes, they took my seat back. And so I am sitting next to you kind of a thing. And, you know, we didn't really have... We didn't really have uh, a lot of conversation, but man, I was just going like this all, for about eight hours, <laughs> writing stuff down and just sitting next to him, and it's just the coolest thing. We're almost getting there. Yeah. I'm going to step out on a limb and share uh, something. 
that the Lord downloaded to me. When I got back the next day, I had about three hours of just getting, speaking of wrecked, and just hit with the Holy Spirit. And I'm getting these prophetic words, so I'm going to read one of them that I think fits our church, okay? There's a war coming. A war is at hand that's way bigger than ISIS. There's a war coming from believers overtaken by the power, the impartation of the Holy Spirit, one by one, to destroy the works of the enemy, the diabolical. The enemy is a dead man. He is already defeated. The kingdom, the king's domain, will be established in righteousness and truth and in the power of the Holy Spirit. We need soldiers, armor bearers, people that are equipped to handle this message and the mission. It's like special ops forces. They are highly trained in, to track, conquer, and destroy what seems to be an intractable enemy. They're doing more than going behind enemy lines. They are completely surrounding the enemy, shouting, You are defeated. Put your hands up. Now, and then these believers move in and crush the enemy from all sides to where there is nothing left. In Brazil, Blaine was teaching this one night, and again, this is the early vineyard guy, and he was teaching about the kingdom is coming. The kingdom is coming. And he says it about 10 times with increasing intensity. The kingdom is coming. And he says, we're on the verge, and we've heard this, but it's, we're hearing it all over. We're on the verge of the greatest revival ever. Okay? This isn't hype. It's not, you know, to try and get excited about in the natural, but it's, it's the greatest revival ever. That we're going to see the unsaved and people that have been on the fence or backslid and coming back and wanting to follow us. Wanting to follow us. So how do you get ready? <laughs> yeah, I think we were showing a good example of that earlier today about freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The whole meaning of Jesus is to set people free, right? Free from captivity, breaking chains, breaking off strongholds. Anything that would keep you from what God has for you. Don't gauge if you think what he has for you is small. I think bigger. <laughs> Don't be thinking small. Because even, even what it, if, it, if it is, so to speak, small, it's not in his economy. It's big. So don't, don't minimize what he is saying to you, what he has for you. Okay. You want to position yourself to get all that he wants to give, like all of it. You're waiting on him. Sometimes he's waiting for you, right? He's already ready, but he's waiting for you. Don't let your circumstances, if they're painful right now, be distracting because they're not going to last. They're not permanent. So who wants to be alive at this very moment in time and know that your life makes a difference? That you have great impact. Okay. So I have everybody stand. I think this is important. Do a little experiment here. Okay. Holy Spirit experiment. And if you just put your hands out or however you want to be in a receiving posture. Okay. Okay. You know, this is about John 5, 19 and 20. Jesus only did the things he saw his father doing. So we're here to do the things that we see our Father doing, okay? okay. So I just ask the Holy Spirit come more now, even more now, even more now, whatever he wants to do, even more now, more now, more now, more, overflow, 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 more than you can stand. More than you can stand. So if you want all that he has, he wants to give you all that he has. 
He doesn't want any barriers, none of that. So all of it, all of it. Sometimes people feel tingling in their fingers or their hands or their body. Sometimes they feel heat when the Holy Spirit's coming on them. Some of that, sometimes that's for healing, and sometimes that's for releasing of the gifts that he already has for you, of the gifts he already has for you. So more, Lord. More, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, stay. More of your presence. More of your presence. Anybody feel heat or tingling or anything like that in your bodies? Okay. Yeah? <laughs> Come on up forward, whoever has that. Heat or tingling? <laughs> tingle, tingle. Jason, you want to come up too? <laughs> That's good. That's good. Wow. That's a lot of you. Anybody else, don't be afraid. It's not, this isn't a fear day. This is a faith day. The wrong F. It's the wrong F. This is the faith day. Okay? It's a faith day. It's a faith day. Come, Holy Spirit.